today we really have to deal with that because we are at L L A C M A. We will call the Los Angeles County of the Museum of the Arts, and the way Matt there. I call him the master of the L A C M A Y because he really master of the Chinese art. He is Stephen Little. Nice to meet you, Stephen. Nice to meet you. And uh, I'm the, from the Chinese uh, community at the Chinese TV station. We call the Jordan Show, and of course, it's a local for Los Angeles audience. Nice. Or also, it's the program to the China, Hong Kong, and Taiwan, nice. Macau, and Taiwan. And of course, I'm from. So I want to know, you are uh, been the creator for 40 years. I believe you were high rock. And uh, how long you do you research the Chinese song? Um, I've been studying Chinese art since I was in college in the early 1970s. At Cornell. 97s? Yeah, wow. I'll be 1973 I first studied. Mm -hmm. um, Even China and uh, American just uh, have the yes. diploma? Yes. <laughs> to have the country relationship. I started studying Chinese language in 1975 oh. at, at UCLA. UCLA? Where I got my master's degree. Mm -hmm. Uh, I first went to China in 1986 when I was doing my research on my PhD at Yale University on Ming Dynasty painting. So I've been going to China since 86. Since 1980, which city were we? <coughs> I went to Beijing, Shenyang, Nanjing, Tianjin, Suzhou, Shanghai, and Guangzhou. Okay, what the first impression you got from China at that time? Well, to be honest, how bad my Chinese was. The first day. <laughs> You're bad. <laughs> oh, I spoke in Chinese. Oh, no. Okay. I, I studied two years. I actually started learning when I arrived in Beijing. Okay. And I had to speak. Um, I was, you know, I'm a study of uh, ancient, I'm a student of ancient China. You're ancient China. Okay. Uh, I'm not really a specialist on contemporary, contemporary Chinese art. Mm -hmm. um, so I am very impressed on, I was immediately impressed on the, uh, just how old and rich uh, Chinese culture is. Um, I am a specialist on painting and calligraphy. I do a lot with ceramics. Um, but I was, um, it was for me, it was very important to go to Beijing and to Shenyang and all of these cities, Shanghai. Um, I study every period in Chinese history mm -hmm. from uh, Xin Shi Ji Shaddai to the present. Wow. Uh, you know, so Shang and Zhou and Han. I've, I've been lucky to work in museums in America that have very strong Chinese collections like Cleveland, like San Francisco, um, like, uh, I don't know, Chicago. Mm -hmm. So I, I devoted my life to studying China. And I think for LACMA, for this museum, we want to be a leader in promoting Chinese art and culture in America, not just in Los Angeles, but in, in the US. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are very lucky to have a director, Michael Govan, who really believes in our friendship with China. The fact that we are merging with a museum in Shanghai, the Used Museum, we will be the first American museum with a branch or a, 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 a platform in China. Wow! Uh, I've never heard of the first time for me to have heard of it. I think China, a couple of years, I have never heard of that, I've never seen that. And maybe I go back, I will see that. Okay. Yes, yes. And I want to know, you know, even today I will see a non of the matters of the materials uh, yes. art yes. from China. Yes. I still saw a, a little bit that there is a culture heritage. Even yes. oh, I saw the very modern, very abstract. Yes. I saw something like the clothing or yes. something that's yes. still the culture heritage. So when you set up the expression, how you choose this artworks or how you choose Chinese artists? Uh, that's a very good question. The, the choice of the artworks was made by uh, a very famous uh, curator, Wu Hong, who teaches at the University of Chicago. He is from Beijing. He got his PhD at Harvard in the 1980s. He is one of the top stars in the world of uh, curating and studying contemporary Chinese art, although his PhD was on, I think, the Han Dynasty. Mm -hmm. he, uh, this is his exhibition. He is a guest curator mm -hmm. for us. Um, but I think the, the first part of your question is very interesting because you're seeing materials here which have a long history. Yeah. This work, for example, is Huang Hua Li. Huang Hua Li. This is the most blue. famous wood for Ming Dynasty furniture. Qing oh, Dynasty Qing furniture. Qing Dynasty furniture. Now, it's a heritage. Yes. <laughs> you only can find it in Hainan. Uh -huh. um, 
the, the, the work by Leo Genwa, who works in porcelain. Mm -hmm. uh, this work, Black Flame, in the other room. Mm -hmm. These are made at Jingdezhen. Jingdezhen is the most famous city in China for porcelain. Going back yes. to the Ming Dynasty, going back to the Yuan Dynasty. Yes. It's amazing to me how many of these contemporary artists have a deep understanding of Chinese history, mm -hmm. of the history of Chinese art, of the material themselves, and often they're using materials that have a long history mm -hmm. in a very modern, very contemporary way. But if you ask them about Chinese history, they can talk to you, mm -hmm. sometimes better than a professor, <laughs> because they themselves have studied, and they, they do calligraphy every day, and they, uh -huh. do, you know, they are really deeply involved in antique Chinese culture, but they are creating the most contemporary works. So for me, this show, this is the first show of contemporary Chinese art at LACMA. Mm -hmm. It's the first really big show of contemporary Chinese art in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. I think uh, this show will be up into early January of next year. Mm -hmm. I really hope that people who come here, whether they know a lot or very little about China, they will, they will recognize something of their own experience of the world in these works. Because uh, you can teach people about a, a culture like China very fast mm -hmm. in a museum. It might take, you might have to read 20 books mm -hmm. to have this one experience, the same level of knowledge and learning that you have in one hour here. Mm -hmm. Cool. I really get I'm not impressed with all the expression even Chinese. My first time I'm walking, I'm not really careful to see all the artworks. I cannot tell this is from China. From China, they're Chinese artists because uh, to give me the really world culture, very international. There is uh, contemporary art and abstract. I get impressed. So, as a creator, creator of the 40 years in the world, he's very master in the expertise of the Chinese art. I think the world culture art, art the master of the uh, and expertise of the world culture. Also, if they do very deep research and deep study of the Chinese history and the Chinese culture and the Chinese art, of course. And diners, diners, diners. And I want to ask you what you really want to bring all these artworks. What do you really want to your, your viewers, your audience think? America and China are actually very old friends. Mm -hmm. We were allies in the Second World War. <laughs> and I think on several levels, I think an exhibition like this, and, and because this is art from China, mm -hmm. uh, it's a mirror of contemporary Chinese society and culture, but culture always transcends a politics. Politicians come and go, mm -hmm. like the wind. Mm -hmm. The art is much deeper. Mm -hmm. The art tells you something about the culture, and I think it's very important for Americans to understand China. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have so many things that are, we use every day that are made in China. Our computers mm -hmm. are put together in China. Mm -hmm. Our shoes, our children's toys, mm -hmm. most of them yeah, are made everything. in China. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's critical that Americans understand China. Now, Chinese culture is much older. It has a very different way of looking at the world. But at the end, we're both human beings. We have the same problems on a day-to-day -day level. And I think this show, I, I hope, you asked what will our visitors experience here. Yeah. I hope that they will come away understanding that Chinese culture today is very sophisticated, very global. These, these artists are, are, many of them have lived in New York for many years. And I think if they can come away understanding that Chinese and Americans are more alike than different. Our histories are different, but our experience today, our problems today are many, often the same problems. Um, I, want, I want visitors to this exhibition to be curious. I want them to see things that, that they have never seen before, that um, speak to issues they care about, that they can see their face in this mirror. That's very powerful. Um, and sometimes in exhibitions in a museum like this, we're not here to give answers. We're here to ask questions. The question stays in their mind. We don't have to give the answer necessarily, but the question is very powerful. Just to ask a question, what is the meaning of these works of art? How do they speak to us? That's very powerful. That's a responsibility that we have also. Thank you. Thank you. So nice. Right now, we are at the LMC 
and A. Los Angeles the Count of the Museum of the Arts. And right now I met the Susanna of the Pharaoh. She is a co-creator of the Chinese art. Right now, we're today we are audience and I were visiting all their all the lore of the matter of the materials art from China. Hi. Hi. Yeah, and the vice major of the uh, Susanna. I want to introduce why you set up this uh, very unique. But give me the very the world culture and international culture of the art. Mm -hmm. So this exhibition, you know, um, exhibitions have been done in the past about material art in general, but China has a, a unique interaction with material art. Um, so a lot of the artists in this exhibition have very close personal relationships with the materials that they're using and have chosen to use one unconventional material throughout much of their artistic practice. Um, this was the idea of one of uh, the other curators of this exhibition, Wu Hong, from the University of Chicago um, and the Smart Museum of Art. Um, so he brought this idea of bringing together all of these different artists who have unique relationships with unconventional artistic materials um, into one single exhibition, and that's how the allure of matter came to be. Okay, so I, you have been to China, or you just yes, you do I, research of the China? So you met the, all the Chinese artists, right? A lot of these artists, I have you are met. Them. You have the met yes. to research and talk about them. So why you choose this artist? I know in China a lot of the artists, mm -hmm. so why you choose that? But honestly, I saw all of the uh, materials art from China. It is, I'm Chinese also. I lived there for 30 years, but I still very, I'm very impressed by the old exhibition. All that material, yeah, the very, yeah. So I just wonder why you choose this art, such an artist of Chinese art. Of course. So these artists are the artists who we found who are using unconventional materials. For example. Hai Guocheng, the artist whose work is behind us, has been using gunpowder in his practice for decades now, since, since the 1990s, since the 1980s actually. Um, and obviously gunpowder is not a traditional material that you would be using in artwork. You expect Chinese artists to be using materials like ink or later oil painting um, or maybe different ceramic materials, but gunpowder um, it's not a material that you would be expecting. So all of the artists from this exhibition are using materials that are either unexpected or carry a significant personal meaning to them, which has created these strong relationships with their materials. Cool. So yeah, all of the uh, exhibition, all the artworks, looks very abstract abstract to me but there's see I saw there one that abstract like that one expression they use I heard of the use of 500,000 secrets to create that one is an artwork uh, when you choose this uh, artist I don't know what's his name I, I say for Empress shipping no, shipping okay so why you choose this uh, artwork because this uh, kind of like very modern very a uh, lot about Chinese, even American, even Africa, even European people can do that. Why you choose that from this one? So Ming um, actually has a very um, interesting history with with tobacco, which is his chosen material for this exhibition. Um, in the early two thousands, he visited Duke University, um, and Duke University has a strong history of. A relation to the tobacco industry. Mm -hmm. While he was working on an artist's residency at Duke University, he became very fascinated with the history of tobacco there and also with the fact that the Duke family and the New York Tobacco Company brought cigarettes into China as early as the late 19th century. Mm -hmm. So, given that the, the tobacco industry has affected China so much, especially in contemporary life, where about 40% of cigarettes are consumed in China today. 
um, Shuping has created a series of artworks called the Tobacco Project, which are related to um, both this history of the American tobacco industry and the tobacco industry coming into China. Cool. Okay. So, as a uh, full time working for LCMA, like a Los Angeles uh, County Museum of uh, uh, art, and uh, you are co-creator of the Chinese art. What do you really want to bring to your audience? Well, I hope that a lot. Um, you know, I think that a lot of people haven't seen materials like this being used, um, as well as some people are not super aware of um, how the contemporary art world in China is especially um, in the Western world. That's not necessarily a part of our, our average artistic um, knowledge. So I want to bring this understanding, this wonder about what's going on in the Chinese contemporary art world um, to LACMA and to our visitors here. Thank I'm you very, very happy Thank to you. interview. Thank you. Thank you.